The first free thing I'm going to give you today that can change your life, as far as I'm concerned, is cleansing and detoxing the body a minimum of four times a year. Now, I know it's the buzzword now. I picked up one of my gossip magazines, and they were talking about detoxing in there. So everybody's talking about detoxing. But I've been detoxing for 35, almost 40 years now. I've been detoxing a very long time. When Detox used to mean from drugs and alcohol, you know. But now it's about detoxing the body. And I think that is the single most important thing as human beings that we need to do is cleanse and detox our bodies a minimum of four times a year, especially if you live in a city like we do. Cleansing and detoxing. Uh, it's, it's everything. It's, you, you break down, I'm gonna go back to that one. Let's do the, the layers of toxicity. So what happens is, this is a little cell, and we have a trillion cells internally. And what happens is these cells build up layer and layer and layer and layers of toxicity. And remember, it's these layers of toxicity that are sending out the messages, the gases, to your cells to feed them. Well, when you detox your body, you start to break down these layers of toxicity. You start to break them down so that you get closer to your center. Do you ever get there and you're finished and done? Probably when you're dead, as far as I'm concerned, which is why I detox a minimum of four times a year. I'm detoxing right now as we speak, folks. I won't tell you what I'm doing, but I'm doing one of my major detoxes of the year because it's January and I start out January with a cleanse. I do it four times a year, sometimes five because if you have a, a um, gene pool like mine then you may need to do it a little bit more you know because I don't handle toxicity well at all. That very large person that you see they have a great gene pool because if I ate that much to get that large I'd be dead so I don't have a gene pool to handle all of that. So I detox four times a year so you may ask yourself well why would she you know she's a vegan meaning I don't eat meat fish chicken or dairy for 42 years I'm probably 99.9% .9 raw when I haven't just opened up a cooked restaurant um, I don't drink smoke or do drugs I don't um, necessarily eat anything with chemicals, but then I can't be 100% sure there because I don't just eat in my restaurants. I go out to other restaurants. I don't want to live in a bubble. I don't want to be a vegan Nazi or raw foodist where I can't live in the world. You know, that's as important to me. That's as feeding, like food, being around people. So I don't want to be isolated from myself, so I go out to other restaurants. Do I eat meat, fish, chicken, or dairy? Nope. Do I eat cooked? Nope. Probably not. But I drive behind buses. I'm eating at these restaurants where I'm sure there's chemicals in the food. I get my clothes dry clean. I said earlier, just because you know it's perfect doesn't mean you do it. I know about the greener cleaner, but my husband takes the cleaning in, so we don't go to the greener cleaner. You know, So I'm taking in chemicals through my skin. Your skin is the largest eliminative organ in the body, and it's the largest absorbing. You take everything in through your skin, which is why I don't put anything on my skin I wouldn't eat. Not true, because I'm not perfect. I color my hair, OK? so. Uh, I'm not perfect, but because I color my hair, I detox four times a year without fail. I detox my body. So, you know, a lot of you may be sitting there saying, well, you know, I don't eat sugar or I don't smoke cigarettes or I gave up meat or I gave up this. You still need to detox if you are living in this world. The only people I think who don't need to detox, maybe if you're living in the rainforest, on a mountaintop somewhere and you're picking your fruits and vegetables up off the trees and stuff and nothing's been processed, then you probably, and you got all the oxygen in the air you're supposed to have, you probably don't need to detox. But if you're living in this world, not in a bubble, <coughs> you need to detox and cleanse your body. And what happens is you literally take the clock backwards. And things happen to your system that people call miracles, but it's not a miracle, it's just your God-given right. The body is meant to regenerate and heal itself. If you cut your finger and you don't do anything to it, doesn't it heal up all by itself? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You bite your tongue, doesn't it eventually heal that mm -hmm. tissue? Well, the whole body is designed to do that. It's just that we put ourselves in such dire situations that it doesn't work instantly, or we're not doing the right things to help it work. So you go down, down, down. My mother didn't just get cancer and die. My mother was constipated her whole life. She had migraine headaches her whole life. Then she had a gallstone operation. Then she had a hysterectomy. And then she got the big C. And from diagnosis, she was dead seven months later at 48. And you hear this story over and over and over again. And I don't believe my mother died from cancer. My mother died from chemotherapy. She died from the chemicals. So, am I saying you shouldn't go to doctors? Absolutely not. And there are some doctors out there who are integrative, who do believe in holistic, and those are the doctors you want to find.
because the others, I don't think there's a huge cabal of bad people out there. I think there's a system in place. And it's very difficult to step outside of that system, especially if you spent the kind of money they spent to go to medical school. You know, you got to kind of follow the pattern of what the American Medical Association tells you to do, or what the pharmacies tell you to do, the pharmaceuticals tell you to do. So I'm not saying you shouldn't go to doctors. I personally have not been to a doctor in 40 years, but I don't recommend that for anybody else. But I'm very confident and I'm very sure of myself. And have I had perfect health ever since I started doing this? Absolutely not. I've had all kinds of things happen to me. I've had lumps pop out. I used to have a huge thing in my throat. Some of you who know me before used to see that huge thing in my throat. If I had gone to get diagnosed, I would have Hashimoto or thyroid or whatever they call it. I just did some research and that's my pink enzyme I came out with, which helps relieve mucus from the system and it's all but gone. I got a tiny little dot here. I should get that picture to put up on the screen with the big thing in my throat. So have I enjoyed perfect health since I started all this? Absolutely not. Every time maybe something happens I just know it's time to up my game. It's time to learn more. Am I saying that's right for everybody here? No, but you can start your journey somewhere and you can find someone who wants to work with you on that journey. And I'm kind of leading here because we have Dr. Carlos Reynas here. You want to stand up, Dr. Reynas? Uh, he is an integrative doctor. I saw you come in. You were trying to sneak in the door. <laughs> Um, he is an integrative doctor and he's one of the doctors when people are taking my classes <coughs> that I recommend they go and see him. Does he do conventional? Absolutely. But he has an eye on the alternative. And the more alternative you want to do, the more he'll give you. He has to be a part of the AMA too and do certain things by guidelines, but the more you want to do, the more he will work with you. And you, that's the kind of doctors you want to find with, find to work with. You know, uh, every so often a friend will get challenged with something. They'll come to me and they'll go, well, I've got the top surgeon at Northwestern, you know, and I want to go, that's who you want to run away from because he's at the top. He's got nothing else to learn or wants to. You want to find somebody who wants to work with you, who wants to hear what you have to say, who wants to hear what you're thinking and feeling, not just chemicalize you so that you're a zombie and you don't know what's going on in your body. How often do I have somebody come to me with all kinds of stomach problems and they're on all this medication for their stomach and I'll go, and how's your stomach now? Oh, it's horrible. How long have you been on this medication? Five years. You've been on a medication for five years and your stomach's still horrible? Are you still having anxiety? Whatever you're taking for. Well, you need to have somebody that you can talk to and go, hey, wait a minute, you know, is there another way to do this? Is there something else we can look at? So am I putting down the medical profession? Absolutely not. I'm just saying we are living in a world that is run by systems, and the systems in, are in place, and it's up to you to wake up and step outside of the system. It's your responsibility to take care of you so that you no longer are just in this negative gravitational pull that you're being taken down. And that's what my place is all about. That's what I'm all about. I'm about helping you to wake up to your reality, helping you to wake up to what works for you. That's what Karen's is all about. And there are places all around the country now. It isn't just here in Chicago. So to me, detoxing and cleansing, and by the way, there are other people that do detoxing and cleansing. Are there every, uh, would I follow everybody? No, I wouldn't go to an overweight dietitian. I wouldn't go to somebody trying to teach me uh, about health that had mood swings or they would, you know, you look very carefully. I wouldn't go to a blind ophthalmologist. I wouldn't go to a ball hairdresser. So you need to look at who you want to teach you and see do they embody what it is you want to learn, what you're looking for, for you. You need to find the right place. And there's all kinds of books. Uh, there are places all over the country. My book will be out the end of this month. You all want to get it? <laughs> and guys, you won't mind walking around with this book, you know? <laughs> when you see the ladies, I've learned to soak my nuts. Um, <laughs> that's just the name uh, title I came up with because it's very important to soak your nuts before you eat them. You break down the enzyme inhibitors, you break down the fats, and it's easier for your body to digest. How many people have nut allergies, but they can eat at McDonald's, you know? <laughs> the, the world is all turned around, and nobody's stopping to think about it. You just kind of, yeah, yeah, I'm miserable. I got Crohn's disease, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a, my sentence for life. I've got, I'm allergic to this, it's my sentence for life. I'm diabetic, it's my sentence for life. Let me tell you, people that take my classes get over, I have a 97% success rate. 
And I say 97, I really feel it's 100. If you show up every week, it's 100% success rate because whether you're doing everything or not, you're planting seeds, you're learning new things, you're getting new information and education about yourself and how you want to take care of yourself. So everybody is successful. But I had a woman with fibromyalgia. She couldn't walk up the steps any longer. After two detoxes, she was running up the steps and went back to school for her master's d degree. She was a school teacher. Uh, let's get, um, let's get um, what's her name? Yeah, Joette, <laughs> Joette Waters. Joette Waters uh, came to do the detox. She had been a vegetarian, not a vegan. She had been a vegetarian for 25 years. After she did the detox, this is the way she looked. And she's getting all kinds of movie roles and things now. You know, she's living her dream. Uh, and she was losing her hair. She was literally going bald. And her hair is all starting to fill in. Let's do the next picture, too. You know, you're saying, but what's the hair got to do with the face, got to do with anything else? It's all connected. Do you see that? It's all connected. You can't compartmentalize the body and, you know, take this over for this pill and this drug and this for this pill and this drug and my hair for this pill and this drug. It's all connected. And when something starts to go wrong, it's telling you the whole organism is out of balance. The whole organism is out of balance, not just your eye or your nose or your throat or your tummy or your knees or your foot. In fact, that's where a lot of your uh, illness starts is in the feet, and you're really not taught to pay attention to that. It kind of starts at the feet and works its way up. So you go and you get the foot operations, and you do all this stuff. How many people do you know that had foot operations that still have bad feet? Everybody. Very seldom. How many people do you know have had back operations and they don't still have back trouble? Everybody, right? Because you see, you're just cutting out the problem. You're not getting to the root of the problem. And I liken that to driving your car and the brake light goes on and goes, warning, warning, your brakes are about to go out and you get out and you snip the wires and you keep driving. <laughs> That's what your operations and your chemicals and your radiation are doing. You're just snipping the wire and you're not getting to the source. Do I believe that some people don't need drastic, dramatic ways to start their journey. Absolutely some of you do and some of you won't be motivated to go as far as you need to go. But then afterwards, and it's time to give yourself a whole new start. It's time to do things differently. So, um, and then we have, oh, everybody worries about weight gain, right? And weight is a wonderful manifestation of imbalance. This is Memory Knox. She came to me, uh, she'd been a large girl her entire life. She was never tiny. Her entire life she was like, can you guys see over here? Am I standing in front? She'd been a large girl her entire life. She did the detox class, my detox class, every other month for eight months. Every other month she chose to come in and do the detox because she was feeling good. She wanted to keep feeling better and better. And this is her after eight months. She was very motivated. She just kept doing it over and over and over again, which is what I do. I keep doing it over and over and over again, which is why I'm not changing and going down this negative gravitational pull. I keep doing it over and over again. My uh, hairstylist, makeup artist said to me today, uh, it was really funny, he, uh, well, he thought it was funny. He said, so-and-so is taking your class so much, and she asked me what I'd done. I said, no, she said, I've taken that class four or five times. I could tell you everything Karen's saying. I don't need it anymore. Meanwhile, she's growing older and getting larger. So obviously it doesn't work hearing it one time. Do you get it? They don't show you one commercial on TV and expect you to get it. They don't show one Starbucks and you're going to run out there every day. They show it to you over and over and over and over and over again. And it's the same thing with changing our lifestyle and healing ourselves. We need to do it over and hear it over and over and over again. The reason I'm so successful, because it's all I'm talking about, and people are bringing it back to me. I've created an environment. I've kind of like put myself in a little bubble here. So it's easy for me. And it's not always that easy all the time. But it's easier for me than for you. I'm not tempted by the fake smells from some of the restaurants and stuff as you're walking down the street. You know, they have laboratories where they create the smells for you from food. I mean, you guys are eating Frankenstein food now and wondering why you're tired and miserable and losing your hair and losing your virility and going sterile and all these other things. It's because your cells aren't being fed anything. And by the way, guys on high blood pressure medication, impotence is in your future. That's how I get a lot of guys to class. <laughs> impotence is in your future. See, and there are a few women here saying it's true, okay? <laughs> Very true. All right, so the women are speaking for the guys. It le and they don't usually tell you that when they put you on the high blood pressure medication, but it leads to impotence. I mean, so many of those chemicals are leading to your next tragedy or your next challenge in your life. The chemicals on top of the chemicals on top of the chemicals.